Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. T Analyst here on Twitter posting this Bitcoin, a bull run begins. Take a look at this, guys. Three and a half years between each cycle, and it's looking like we're coming up to the next bottom. And it's looking like we're coming up, or rather, we are now in the uh, the most recent bottom of the cycle. We do count three and a half years from the last bottom. So taking that into account, uh, and, we, and we have been on the mark here, three and a half years for the first cycle, then between 2015 to 2019, another three and a half years. And so I guess if we were to take, uh, you know, the same kind of time frame, so back in here was the bottom, that was roughly 2018, 2019, and we take it to roughly where we are today. And I mean, this is going to be rough, so give or take here and uh, if we take the bottom if we were to take this point here it's about 1400 bars here so 1400 whoops 1400 divided by 365 and we're almost in around there 3.8 so just over three and a half years marking a new bottom the most recent bottom for this bear cycle and if you guys take a look on t analysts chart here uh he does also plot the rsi and uh, throughout those bottoms, throughout those bear cycle bottoms, we've continuously seen the RSI dip down uh, into this low down here, okay? So that's uh, denoted by this green bar, and we can see the same is happening right now. So three and a half years approximately, low on the RSI. Uh, we know Bitcoin price uh, is also down significantly since it's all-time high. Right now it's down about 75.6%. Bitcoin trading right now at 16,800. And guys, we've also got XRP up a little bit today. XRP is trading at 36.8. Uh, overnight, we did see a bit of a spike for XRP. Actually, not just overnight. Throughout yesterday, we did see XRP pop uh, quite a bit here. When I was uh, recording yesterday's video, we were in and around here and we were seeing a little bit of that upward momentum. I was noticing we were making higher lows and then all of a sudden, boom, out of nowhere, uh, over the next several hours, it looks like XRP just exploded. Now, this is only about a six and a half percent move. It actually does look a lot more impressive uh, than what it actually is, but uh, still not too bad. Uh, we did come up to about 37 cents. Then you guys can see huge retracement, a lot of selling pressure here, uh, denoted by high selling volume. Uh, but then we actually made a new high up to about 37.3. So we've come back down a little bit here right now, XRP trading at 36.8, but we are seeing a bit of a boom on the XRP chart. I mean, I don't really know why. It could be that, uh, you know, we're hearing murmurings and the fact that the SEC is scared to disclose the Hinman documents. The SEC did recently make a deliberate attempt to block and release the documents. However, the court explained that the material meets the test for relevancy under the extremely broad concept of relevance used to resolve discovery motions. I don't know if that's gotten some people in the XRP community uh, extra excited, perhaps, maybe purchasing more XRP as a result. Uh, just taking a look at the entire market right now. So everything is fairly flat, uh, whether it's up a little or down a little in the red, in the green, uh, not too much movement by and large. If we just take a look at the 24 hour though, and we just, uh, you know, arrange the, uh, the, the highest performing coins in the last 24 hours, you can see, interesting to note this, so Terra Classic or LUNC coin is actually up the most, 15.17. Uh, we've got Quant, another interesting project, up 8.40. Uh, I don't know too much about Lido Dow, but that's up 3.87. Filecoin, which has recently been decimated, and XRP, rounding out the top one, two, three, four, five cryptocurrencies. Also interesting to note that two of those cryptocurrencies have recently uh, been hit hard over the last several months. Well, we know about uh, Terra Luna, Do Kwan, and that whole scenario from back in the spring. And then recently, Filecoin has actually uh, taken a bit of a hit as well. I'm not entirely sure why still. I'm not following the Filecoin story, uh, but you guys can see way back. Here, let me throw it on the daily here. Yeah, Filecoin, uh, even since the summer, has taken uh, quite a large hit uh, down from uh, $227 per coin. Right now, it's trading at only about $3.13. So, uh, recently, we have seen that coin rally. Again, not entirely sure why. And then XRP randomly is on that list as well. So some things to consider here while taking a look at uh, today's market activity. Michael Branch uh, posting this. I thought this was kind of funny, actually. SBF has now gotten prison advice from none other than the pharma bro himself, Martin Shkreli. He outlined recently that Sam isn't exactly going to be somebody that fits into prison and that he needs to rebrand himself to fit in and make friends. So um, if you guys don't know Martin Shkreli, he is the guy who uh, bought the patent for the uh, HIV pill, I believe it was, and then uh, was trying to resell it for 400 times the amount or some astronomical number like that. Well, he was put behind bars for securities fraud between 2018 and 2022. 
and he has given Sam Bankman Freed some advice. He said on a podcast with Laura Shin that SBF needs to rebrand himself for jail as being a rich white kid from a good neighborhood doesn't sound too great. <laughs> Sam isn't exactly going to be somebody that fits into prison, Shkreli said, adding that this type of sensibility doesn't go over well and that it's a very testosterone-filled masculine place, alongside uh, shaving his head and deepening his voice. So those are two uh, <laughs> two pointers that he uh, suggested to Sam Bankman-Fried. Uh, Shkreli outlined that SBF needs to make friends fast and embed himself in the culture of the prison system. For example, Pharma Bro said SBF should no longer say he's from Stanford University. Here's another quote. He also doesn't know anything about the streets and criminal culture. My advice is to pick those things up as quickly as he can. Uh, he should be listening to as much rap music as possible. He should be trying everything there is to know about gangs. Now, I don't know if this is uh, if this interview was a bit tongue in cheek or what. But um, there you go. Advice from somebody who was in a similar boat. Martin Shkreli, entrepreneur and investor, uh, was in jail for four years himself, giving Sam Bankman Freed <laughs> advice on how to cope. Now, um, I mean, we, we don't know if that is ultimately going to be Sam Bankman Freed's fate. I mean, uh, many of us in the crypto community are hoping that uh, we do see some justice here from the FTX case. So we're just waiting to see uh, what the verdict will be on that. It will likely be a long process ahead. Ian Bins here bringing this up. Okay, SHIB and XRP have recently been listed on Wirex's dual asset investment tool. So here's an update, guys. Web3 money app Wirex has extended support to Shiba Inu and XRP as both assets are now listed on their new dual asset investment tool, Duo. Duo allows users to earn enhanced interest rates on investments. Uh, the duos uh, consist of two assets, a base and a pair asset that can be traded with each other on the exchange. This is opened uh, with a base asset whose price is expected to depreciate against the price of the paired asset. So just kind of uh, giving you a little bit of insight on what that is. Uh, in March of this year, Wirex expanded its ecosystem to enable its 5 million users to access Shiba Inu, thus allowing them to receive, send, store, and exchange Shiba Inu tokens across its app, wallet, and payment platforms. XRP's initial support came far earlier, uh, as far back as 2018, which allowed users to buy, sell, exchange, and deposit XRP using the Wirex app. And so now they've extended uh, these two particular cryptocurrencies to allow their Duo users to enhance interest rates on their investments. So interesting news there coming from Wirex. Wanted to thank Ian Bins for posting that. Do you guys also hear about this? Ripple partner D-Money has now paired up with Visa to empower near real-time cross-border payments. This is coming from the Cryptic Poet here on Twitter. So the new service is expected to launch next year, which is only about a week away now, and will allow D-Money's customers to send Thai bot to over 170 countries in near real time. So D-Money announced this partnership with Visa, the world's leader in digital payments, to integrate Visa Direct Solution into D-Money's international payment platform. The partnership will allow D-Money to offer its customers near real-time cross-currency payment service using only the recipient's Visa card credentials to over 170 countries and territories. The move is in line with D-Money's mission to expand its borderless payment product offerings to reach more people, uh, reaffirming its position as Thailand's leading fintech. The company will launch its new service within 2023, so we don't actually know if it's going to be early 23 or uh, sometime after that. Uh, an API with near real-time push payment capability. Visa Direct is changing how the world sends and receives funds. Ultimately, though, guys, the solution is helping to deliver fast, convenient peer-to-peer -peer payments that are seamlessly integrated within customer accounts and cards. Visa Direct provides banks and fintechs such as D-Money new opportunities to engage with customers through cross-border peer-to-peer transactions. Through D-Money's licensed internet national payment platform, customers can easily send money to friends, family, or businesses by entering the recipient's six-digit Visa card number. So basically, we're seeing real-time transfers of payments uh, and Visa, I mean, considering they are the, I think they're the biggest, I think they're the number one credit card company, uh, and then MasterCard, obviously, number two. So considering they have so many uh, customers already with credit cards, it's almost like a bank account for them. And so, you know, they can leverage the technology, they can leverage DLT, D-Money running through RippleNet to be able to send their customers funds easily, securely on the distributed ledger. And notice here, it does say up here 170 countries and territories, which to me means that there's going to be a, an FX component to this as well. So they will likely have to leverage 
XRP to source that liquidity to uh, convert different fiat currencies, right? If you have somebody in Australia that wants to send Great British Pounds, well, you're going to need to, uh, you know, convert the Australian dollar to GBP as an example. So interesting to see that uh, D-Money is now partnering with Visa. We also know Visa is Ripple enabled through that Earthport connection too. So technically two Ripple partners now partnering up. So that's great to see. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Uh, also saw this guy's from Michael Branch. More XRP is on the move as reported by Whale Alert. Almost 300 million XRP were moved between different wallets last night with Ripple and the Bitstamp Exchange account among them. So Whale Alert has noted this 100 million XRP uh, transferred from Ripple to an unknown wallet. Interestingly, the 100 million XRP sent directly to Ripple remained in the recipient's wallet. The transfer of 12 million in XRP to Bitstamp, however, was part of a $52.3 million shift uh, previously made between two unknown wallets. So more large transactions of XRP on the move. Uh, we have seen the price spike a little bit. Again, you know, just getting me wonder. I, I, I really don't get it sometimes why, uh, you know, we see some coins move and others not. See if we can just uh, refresh this here. Uh, it's still the same in the last 24 hours. We have Luna Filecoin, XRP in the top five, and Quant, um, I don't know, for some strange reason as well. So we're seeing lots of XRP on the move. Of course, you know, um, the rate of XRP movement will increase as we eventually do see more real world utility. So, you know, these these large quantities moving every now and then, it still does have me scratching my head. I mean, if it's to an ODL exchange, uh, we almost always assume that it is going to be for ODL purposes. Um, but when you're seeing large quantities move either from Ripple's wallet or an unknown wallet to another unknown wallet, it just gets me wondering who is moving this XRP and why are they moving such large quantities? Anyway, wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Another thing I found quite curious today, guys, from Crypto Insight UK on Twitter, on behalf of the XRP community, Brad Garlinghouse, why are you liking your own tweet about your settlement with YouTube? Please, would you put us out of our misery and like this tweet if you are settling with the SEC? And out of the 127 likes, has Brad Garlinghouse liked the tweet? Let's just uh, do a quick scroll here. I don't see his avatar. So uh, I'm assuming he has not liked this tweet. Let's just keep going down here. I've already done this uh, earlier this morning and I did not see him like the tweet. Uh, and I don't know if this will even populate the entire list, but uh, I don't see him here. I guess an easier way is just to look at the follow button and uh, to see the people I follow because I do follow Brad. Uh, I would definitely notice that rather than trying to analyze the avatar here, but I don't see him here. So maybe he has, I mean, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he has not seen the tweet yet, but many in the XRP community are also, uh, you know, kind of wondering why did Brad Garlinghouse like his own tweet from so long ago. Mr. Hubert here on Twitter also mentioning it. Riddle me this, Brad Garlinghouse just randomly liked his own tweet about the YouTube settlement from about a year and a half ago. So here it is. Cryptocrat down here pointing out what he thinks is a troll move. Dude, we are being trolled. H. Bar Herman saying number one rule of tweeting is like your own tweets. Uh, Secret Squirrel down here saying because he slash they won or the case is going to court and he can't say it directly. So is it some kind of uh, coded message to the XRP community? And could it mean something even bigger? I mean, I did just talk about this, how the SEC is too scared to disclose the Hinman documents. And I mean, is it getting us closer to a settlement? Let me read you guys a little bit more of this uh, because I just briefly touched on it earlier. The US federal court recently ordered the US Security and Exchange Commission to give Ripple Labs access to key documents relating to a speech made by the former official. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, the SEC made a deliberate attempt to block the release of the documents. However, the court explained that the material meets the test for relevancy under the extremely broad concept of relevance uh, used to resolve discovery motions. Both the SEC and Ripple were due to file redactions of the documents relating to the summary judgment a couple of days ago. It is reported that both parties met the deadline. However, uh, the SEC has disclosed in a filing that it is still not ready to release Hinman's documents to the public. So, I mean, yeah, this is a different lawsuit altogether, but because of confidentiality agreements, I'm sure, and the like, uh, we cannot get direct answers from, uh, you know, official representatives at Ripple or their legal counsel, but riddles, I mean, riddles on Twitter and hints, uh, clues on Twitter, I think is fair game. Whale chart here also bringing it up. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse just liked his own tweet about a YouTube settlement he tweeted one and a half years ago. Is he sending us a secret message about the XRP versus SEC case? Uh, and Florence Nightingale responding, I think this is the latest tweet Brad liked. 
So if we go to uh, go real quickly to Brad Garlinghouse's Twitter account here and click on his likes, you guys can see in chronological order uh, which tweets Brad Garlinghouse did like most recently. And so, you know, as far as this week goes, from back in March of 2021, last year Ripple and I sued YouTube for failing to enforce its own policies by allowing fake accounts impersonating my Ripple verified account to conduct XRP giveaway scams. We've now come to a resolution to work together to prevent, detect, and take down these scams. Uh, so that's one of three. It continues down here. Social platforms are starting to acknowledge their role in allowing crypto scams to persist and recognize the need to be part of the solution. Some, like XRP Forensics, are helpful to, de uh, to detect and track stolen funds, but platforms need to take a lead uh, or it's just like whack-a-mole. Now, very interesting, this last tweet here as brought up by, uh, who was it down here? It was B here on Twitter, okay? He says this, the last part though, and this was the last tweet, the three of three, Brad Garlinghouse writes, while specific settlement terms are confidential here, it's clear to all that without accountability and action, trust erodes in this industry a crucial time when governments around the world are looking closely at crypto. Now, keep in mind, guys, this was from a year and a half ago. Fast forward to the end of 2022, early 23, and we still have not seen sweeping crypto clarity in the United States. We are getting very close. Maybe it was a sign of positivity, optimism that Brad Garlinghouse is feeling in the space. Maybe it is a sign that they are coming closer to a conclusion to the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. Just some observations for me, but tell me down in the comments what you guys think. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.